Well, there's nothing like going on holiday, especially in the rain. Just here where this white marker is, is where the Worcestershire Canal uh, connects with the Trent Mersey. So it's a junction point. And just alongside that is actually the River Trent. So we're part of the Trent Valley. So the canal to the right heads to Wolverhampton. I'm going to head up this way. Walk alongside the Trent Mersey Canal for a little while. Morning folks, it's Andy the Expedition Hiker and today we are in Great Haywood and that's not far from Cannock Wood, Cannock Chase. I've decided to further discover this area. So when we did the Cannock Paranormal we were in the south east side of the Cannock Woods which uh, is an area of outstanding natural beauty. It is 26 square miles or 1 million and 46 acres. We're up on the north side and we're going to wander around the north and northeasterly side of uh, Cadet Chase this time. Uh, we're starting, well, behind me. This is called Essex Bridge. From there, we're going to go into the Sugborough Estate, uh, home to the Earl of Litchfield and the Anson family. From there, we are heading on to uh, into the chase itself. Uh, it is a circular route, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to download it for yourself. So, with that, we best get going. So this is Essex Bridge, one of the oldest pack horse bridges left in England. As you can see, can't get vehicles down here as it crosses the River Trent. There's not much room for more than one person. Thank you. So we're coming to the Sugborough Estate. In a moment we'll see the hall on the right hand side of the mansion. Set on the fringes of Cannock Chase, the estate is set in 900 acres of stunning parklands and riverside gardens. Sugbury is the UK's only complete working historical estate, brought to life by costume living history characters who share their lives and powerful stories from the past with visitors. And uh, it's actually home to the Earl of Litchfield, the Austin family. We're going to walk through the estate. And there's the house itself, the mansion. So we're going to head along this path through the estate and then over towards the woods, Cannock Chase Woods. So I've been informed that actually a lot of it is actually offices now. Only the ground floor is mainly available to see, Fifth Earl of Litchfield was Patrick Litchfield. He was a fashion photographer. He lived on the left-hand side, I've been informed. And he had 35 rooms at one point. Now, the estate is actually 900 acres in size. The sixth Earl, Patrick uh, Litchfield's son, current Earl, I think his name's Thomas. Uh, Patrick had three children, two daughters and a son. And I'm not sure if he actually resides in the house or elsewhere. Anyway, we're going to head this way. We're going to head towards the chase, uh, the top part of the woodlands, and does have a connection 
to a certain author. So the fifth Earl, Litchfield, he passed away in 2005. And after that, National Trust took over the property. And then the council for about seven or eight years. And then the National Trust have taken it back over uh, a few years ago. And now it's a bit of a working farm. I was going to see in front of us, we've got some longhorn cattle. They don't really do much, do they? Just standing there, not even eating. So Patrick Stewart, <laughs> it's not Patrick Stewart, it's Patrick Stewart, this field. At one point he had 35 rooms, but he actually simmered down over the years on costs and everything else. Well, his grandfather passed away, and then his father passed away 18 months later due to allergic reaction to a bee sting which meant that Patrick had to pay double death duty on the estate, which meant his value with his wealth went down considerably. So Patrick Litchfield, he was actually uh, famous as a fashion photographer and renowned for photographing lots of celebrities. And a lot of them actually came here. With, uh, Mick Jagger, Living Newton John, another celebrities of that time and I believe he was actually a quite friendly man to the locals and this area here the grassland he was renowned for sitting on his motorized lawnmower and mowing the lawns himself now as we look over towards that direction you can just see a bit of a hill there I think it's called the Great Haywood Cliffs that's where the uh, the grotto is or the cave with the Hermit's Lift, which I think we're going to try and visit later on today. So this is part of the railway tunnel that goes under the Sugbury Estate. And we're heading up towards Hadrian's Arch. One of eight monuments dotted around the estate. In the centre at the top, looks like a centurion type soldier. I presume, well that must be Hadrian. And we can see across the field is uh, the fallow deers. It's quite a big herd of them. I do believe there's actually red deer either on this state or close to this area as well. There's two in the middle that's pushing antlers against each other. That's a knot hatch. Swirl that tree branch and whistling. There's a duck having a bath. And what's that running across here? Like a mini ostrich. old tree there and then silver birch trees are growing out of it. Well, that original tree isn't silver birch, probably looks like an old oak and they've grown out of a different type of tree. Obviously that's been there some time, the original oak tree. Well that badger looks like he's having a sleep. Just reading this notice board giving the history of Rowerton 
collieries, 1792 to 1960. And actually, the coal used to supply the royal palaces at one point. So, there's around that area is the old slag heap, the spoil heaps, and then around here is the old buildings, like this one here, which is part of the old colliery. I was looking across the landscape and I found something like, oh, what's that there? <laughs> something else there. What is that? I would have said it was a pig. It's in the middle of nowhere. I don't know if you have wild boar around it. Well, I don't know if you saw that. Uh, it was over there. Oh. I've just seen it again. It's like running now. I'm not sure if we can pick this up on camera. The other side of the valley, about halfway up that hill, there's something walking across. It looked like, well, I thought it was a pig, a dog pig. I don't know if you get wild boar here. That's what it looked like. <laughs> Small, but I'm not. But I it was brown rather than black. It wasn't what I was going to talk about. What I was going to talk about is actually just notice this here. It actually looks like a trench, a proper trench actually, this one. So it looks like uh, they were still digging trenches around here as well. well I'm sure over all over the Canic Chase in yeah, the area there have been trenches galore. Okay, I've seen it again. I saw it walking by, I'm not sure. I heard a lady pass by and she got a good clear look at it. I say, it looked like a pig. I didn't catch it on the cameras because I was talking to the lady. But it's over there somewhere. <laughs> if you can see it. Well, all the things I expected to see today, I want that. The lady says, is it a deer? His legs are too short for a deer. I mean, that's there's no path up there. It had a, like a nose, like a snort sort of thing. It just looked like a muddy brown pig. But uh, <laughs> I don't know what it's doing up there. But yeah, funny enough, actually, I was at the time I was just about to mention that when I did the paranormal, I was obviously looking for Slender Man and the girl with the no eyes, as they were meant to be the ones that spotted the most around this area. Well, we didn't find out either of them, which obviously I didn't expect to. But on the other hand, I've walked probably around. In the last couple of times I've been here now, I've walked probably about 35 miles around the whole heartlands and then part of it was at night time when I did the paranormal when I finished that and still we didn't see anything so who knows where slender man lives because it's not around here well I've just looked on google yes wild boars have been spotted in Canuck on Canuck Chase in Staffordshire so odds are that was a wild boar so we're just heading down the Trent and Mersey Canal but in the opposite direction to where we should be going. But the good thing about when you're out walking, you can always change the route. I think there's a crossing point, hopefully. Well, actually, there's a bridge in front of me, so hopefully that's, I can cross that. And then there's a St. Mary's Abbey, I noticed on the map as well. So I think we'll pop past and then we'll head back. This is, there is a bridge here that we can cross, I think, to get myself into a uh, little Haywood. So we've got a canal boat coming in to use the lock. You can see from this side there's a soak away down into the canal. Now looking at the sign by the side of the bridge, this bridge is insufficient for heavy motor cars. So looking at that, maybe this bridge was a toll bridge. more of a pack horse bridge rather than heavy vehicles but anyway we're going to head this way and we're going to go into Little Haywood and then we're going to head up to St Mary's Abbey now I do believe the first Earl of Shrewsbury uh, is buried here a lady did say to me earlier today she's in a crypt so if he's in a crypt we won't see him but if he's in the grounds we might 
So as we're in this direction, best to take a look. Inside the church are several tombs with war tablets and other memorial connections with the local gentry in the parish, including the Worsley Baronets and the Ansons of Shrewsbury Hall. Garnet Worsley, first of Viscount of Worsley, who was Field Marshal in 1913 and buried in the crypt of St Paul's Cathedral. The Anson family vault is located underneath the organ loft, formerly the private gallery of the owners of Shrewsbury Hall. Within the vault is 15 bodies, including the first Earl of Litchfield, Admiral Lord Anson and his wife. Well, the church actually isn't open, so we can't get actually get in and maybe see the vault of the Anson family. But I presume it's that direction towards the altar. Cottage looks quite old, eh? Looks like it's sagging a bit as well. The dormer window definitely is going inwards. There's a pane of glass missing. So I don't think anybody actually lives there. Well, if they do, they need to do some repairs. Nobody lives here anymore. I just spoke to the gentleman there and he's uh, said that it was built in 1854 and just recently closed, which is a shame. It is St Mary's Abbey. Glorious building and it's up for sale. Well, scary that uh, what it may become. Properties around here that just seem to be derelict or closed down. St Mary's Abbey and this large property obviously is boarded up so no one's living there either. So all those sandstone has been cut out. Now hopefully I'm going to try and see if we can get down there. Well I think I found a way down to the case but uh, this was the opposite way. I just quite like the way these roots are with that tree. I presume the tree could fall at any time, although I'm presuming it's embedded into that area. Anyway, we're going to see if we can get down to the cave by going this way. Now there's a path down here, so I presume it's going to take us to the cave entrance. Now I didn't bring my headlamp, so I'm not sure what we'll get to see, but we'll head down this way and see where, what we can find from here. I think this entrance is actually taking us to where the cave is. I'll head down here. Now, the, how the story goes is that I believe it's one of the earls said that he wanted a hermit. I don't know why he wanted a hermit. And 55 people applied for the position. One, Arabus got the title. And I presume, well, the hermit lived here. It seems I might not be able to get much further than this though. So we can see there's a cave there and it does look like there's one up there as well. Now I'm going to try and get up there without actually killing myself doing so. Okay, I'm not sure, sure about that sign, but above it, it does say danger keep out. So probably not the best idea to have a good old rummage around, but we'll have a quick look, see what we can find. You know me, abandoned tunnels and things like that, I like to do. Let's see, maybe the hermit stayed here because you can see those holes there for a shelter was built there, a lean-to type shelter. It could have been for you know, the hermit's animals or it could have been for the hermit himself. Now, it's interesting how the rock face is quite clean and flat, possibly quarried before the hermit came here. Be with. I'm trying to muster my way up here. There's dripping above. I'm not falling into it. <laughs> so we've got this side here, a bit of an alcove, and then around here. So this has been quarried at some point. You can see the way this stone has been carved. So we will go and put this over the other side if we can get to it. Right, we've managed to get up to the other one. Not sure how I'm going to get back down yet, but. <laughs> One thing at a time. Ah, some interesting type of lean-to. I'm not going down there. I presume that's where the hermit stayed. Again, you can see the way the rock face is cut, that this has been carved at some point or other. That's not totally natural, especially those stones like that. But the uh, Haywood Cliffs, this is part of. An interesting little find. 
and just saw caves on the end of the map. It wasn't part of my proper route. But I thought we'd come and have a look. Did a bit of research, like I usually do. And this is where we come up with. So you can see here where that's been built up. That's a wall. So this is, as I say, it's not as natural as it would first look. In front of us, we've got the first piece of water is the Trenton Mersey Canal, I believe. And by the side of it, we've got the River Trent. And then looking over towards Canic Woods, Canic Chase, which is an area of natural beauty. So we're going to head over towards Great Haywood now over to the Church of St. Stephen which is connected to the Aston family and the Earl of Litchfield. Oh what an interesting tree, it looks like a tree within a tree. I think it's, uh, it's like an oak and it's got this, looks like a Christmas tree built into it. <laughs> Not sure much about that one. As you can see the sun is starting to come towards sunset so we better get on to Great Haywood. Right, I think we're going to head over the Trenton Mersey Canal here. Interesting bridge. Well, we've seen quite a few interesting bridges over the Slugbury Estate. So you can see Trenton Mersey Canal. And then down towards the estate and Canic Chase. And if we look this way, that's heading up towards Great Haywood, which is where we're heading to next. And this one being Essex Bridge. Right guys, we're finishing this walk here. We're outside the Clifford Arms, and that's in Great Haywood. Now I was going to have a barbie tonight, but I've actually changed my mind, mainly because it's raining. So I'm going to go and have a pub evening meal in this Clifford Arms, and then walk around to my tent. Uh, so today's been a nice walk, I think. Lovely area to walk in, and well worth visiting if you're in the neighbourhood. So with that, I'm going to say cheerio from here, and I'll see you on another walk hopefully very soon. So until then, take care, look after yourselves and I'll see you soon. Bye bye hikers.